Hello everyone, this is Andres Restart, and this time we're talking about how Metroid Prime 2 and also 3 Remastered have gotten more likely thanks to some recent official Nintendo news. But not only that, there is a leaker that has been gaining more and more notoriety that has spoken on this event that has said some other things including the release timings for these games and also a bit about Metroid Prime 4 being part of a bigger presentation which wasn't clarified to be a Nintendo Direct. So there is certainly a lot to talk about right now that is, well, exciting for Metroid fans. But before going forward, let me ask that if you do enjoy my content to please subscribe and hit that notification bell and if you're unsure, try watching this video through the end and then consider subscribing and hitting that bell. So let's first focus on the official news. We have an official collaboration between Piggyback and Nintendo. They are putting together this amazing visual retrospective art book for the entire Metro Prime trilogy. So looking through the website here, Metro Prime 1 through 3, a visual retrospective, the official art and making of Metroid Prime 1 through 3. I'm getting this. This looks just awesome. Look at the red outline of Samus, how it shines. Look at the side. It's minimalist, but it's also extremely cool. Anyways, looking at the description here, they say, Developed in collaboration with Nintendo and Retro Studios, this art book showcases concept drawings, sketches, and assorted illustrations from the Metroid Prime series. With an extensive range of behind-the-scenes, high-quality artwork, this hardcover anthology spans more than 20 years of Metroid Prime development and includes exclusive commentary from Nintendo producer Kensuke Tanabe as well as the esteemed Retro Studios. Printed on premium sheet-fed art paper, this book is stitch-bound with a lavish cloth hardcover featuring an etched Samus metallic foil. And I see that etching here. It looks great. Scrolling down, Features. Covers Metro Primes 1, 2, and 3, and Prime Remastered. Interesting. Includes a foreword by Metroid Prime producer Kensuke Tanabe. Hmm, I wonder if you might mention anything about Prime 4 here. Very curious on that. Features a vast array of high-quality art and sketches from the developers. Comes with exclusive Retro Studios penned introductions to each game. Dozens of producers' notes offer commentaries, insights, and anecdotes on the featured artwork. Stitch-bound with a lavish cloth hardcover featuring an etched Samus metallic foil and printed on high-quality art paper. And there they show another image of Samus. And the release date is for summer 2025. There will be over 200 pages. And the price? 50 bucks? Seems kind of reasonable, at least to me, a huge Metroid fan. So I love what's being shared here. I am excited about this. But what does this mean for the actual Metroid Prime games? Well, as I alluded to earlier, it is possible that when we finally get this art book this summer, next summer I mean, we may hear something from the Metroid team, the Metroid Prime team, about Prime 4. There might be some mention there, for sure. But what also may be going down is some mention of Metroid Primes 2 and 3. Because there's a really good chance that Metroid Primes 2 and 3 will have come out by this point in time. Why would you put out an art book for Metroid Primes 1 through 3 if you're not going to have some sort of modern version of 2 and 3 as well, and only just 1? We even have Metro Prime 1 Remastered being featured in this art book. It's not just about the original developments of 1 through 3, but also Prime Remastered as well. They mentioned that here. So I do think this adds a little bit more evidence to the idea that we're going to get Prime 2 and 3. Never mind the fact that it just seems like a logical choice to put these games onto Nintendo Switch before the release of Metroid Prime 4, as we've seen for other series like Pikmin and Bayonetta, and we already have Prime 1 Remastered. Never mind that we've heard multiple rumors that these games are coming from places that we consider to be credible. So, these games are coming. But, when are they coming? And how might this relate to Metroid Prime 4? Which all we know is that it's slated for 2025. Well, we have an update from Samus Hunter. They spoke a lot on this subject. In the past, they used to leak a whole bunch of things, but it seemingly was hit or miss. There was a whole bunch of stuff, and... 
The record was spotty at one point and so a lot of people stopped talking about them, myself included. But time has passed, they've come back, they're a lot more selective, and in this year of 2024, they have suggested four different things. Three of those four things have already been confirmed. Emmy the Smiling Man Famicom Detective Club. They teased this before anyone else. Zima Chronicles X. They teased this before anyone else in this year at least, and shortly before it was announced. And they also talked about how we would get Donkey Kong news, and we did. We've gotten a lot of Donkey Kong news, including a Donkey Kong Park Direct, which they teased less than two days beforehand. Now the fourth thing is largely believed to be something having to do with Silk Song, but they also said that it would happen sometime during this winter, which is an entire season and doesn't end until February of next year. So the jury's still out on that one, but we haven't seen any reason to doubt it yet. So there have been no misses so far, and now they are saying a lot about Metroid. So here on Twitter, they responded to the announcement of this visual retrospective. I'm looking forward to replay the entire trilogy on the Switch before that. This would be before the release of this art book, Summer 2025. About to remastered. I can confirm what Grubb mentioned, Jeff Grubb talking about Prime 2 coming to Switch at some point. It was planned as a standalone release, but got moved a couple of times and now is planned for early next year, likely between Donkey Kong Country Returns HD and Xenoblade X. Donkey Kong Country is coming out in January, Xenoblade X is coming out in March. Seems like they're suggesting that the February game from Nintendo that we normally get is going to be at least Metroid Prime 2. Continuing on here, Jamie asks, so is 2 and 3 now bundled together or both still standalone? Samus responds, so I knew that 2 and 3 had separated release times, but given how 2 got moved to 3's time slot and for that one I hadn't received any news, I think it is possible that they are going to handle them as separated releases on the eShop but as one game physically like Pikmin. So you could get each game individually on the eShop, Pikmin 1 and 2, but there was a physical version where you could get both together. If I get concrete info on the technical and distribution aspect before the announcement, I will keep you updated. For now, I can say only that. Continuing on here, so final recap on the situation. Prime 2 release date got moved to the Prime 3 time slot, Q1 2025. So to be clear, they're speculating that it would be between Donkey Kong Country and Zima Chronicles X, which makes a lot of sense. They're not even necessarily saying February, but they're saying that it's been moved to the Q1 time slot. They also say Prime 4 will have a big emphasis on the next big Nintendo presentation. Oh my gosh. They didn't even say direct. They said big presentation, Prime 4. We've had so many theories about Prime 4 being a big cross-gen game. Are they saying this? Maybe. We'll talk a little bit more on that in a moment. For that presentation, there isn't much room to announce the remaining two titles of the trilogy. Why wouldn't there be? Maybe because it's not about Nintendo Switch 1, but perhaps about Nintendo Switch 2. There could be something there, but continuing on, unless they want to shadow drop. Speculation. Prime 2 and 3 are not simple ports, but the graphical rework on these games is inferior to 1. The initial launch of Prime 2 might have been digital only, and got delayed to coincide with Prime 3's launch and giving a bundle physical version. That is their speculation. Here they say, this is all I have to say for now. I don't think it will give new info before the end of the year, unless they are updates on the one I already talked about not announced. Even though we might have to wait up to January. I still have things to talk about, but I prefer to wait for them. So there's a lot here. And if this is all true, what they're reporting, not what they're speculating, because what they're speculating, there is room for interpretation, room for being off there, right? But in terms of Metro Prime 2 being moved to Q1 2025, where Prime 3 is also supposed to be coming out, and that Prime 4 is going to have a big emphasis on the next big Nintendo presentation, and then we also have this art book that's coming out in the summer, it would appear that we're starting to see some significant signs of a big marketing campaign for Metroid overall, culminating in the release of Metroid Prime 4 in the second half of 2025. And if you've been following the channel for the last few weeks, I've actually been talking about Metroid showing up relatively soon. Maybe us getting another look at Prime 4 
and getting it announced in the Metro Prime 2 at the Game Awards show this December. So in just a couple weeks here, we might see Metroid. That's what I'm kind of thinking. And different things have been happening since that initial speculation. Metro Prime 4 was nominated for Most Anticipated Game. Nintendo updated the official Metroid website to have a Metroid Prime 4 section. And now we have this official announcement of this collaboration for this art book coming out next summer. So different Metroid things officially are happening right now. And it would make sense to at least announce Metroid Prime 2 at the Game Awards if it's coming out, say, in Q1 2025, perhaps in February. We've seen Nintendo make announcements like this before. For example, Bayonetta Origins. That was announced at the Game Awards, a Nintendo published title, and released in March. We already talked about how Nintendo actually has a very consistent history of having announcements at the Game Awards. Now, these announcements aren't always as big and exciting as Breath of the Wild or Smash Brothers, what we have seen a few, in a few years, but it might be something smaller. It might just be some NSO games. It might just be DLC for an upcoming game. There has certainly been a spectrum here in terms of significance of announcement, but in most years, we do see Game Award announcements. Now, with this talk of Metro Prime 4 being part of a bigger presentation, having a bigger emphasis there, it could just be a Nintendo Direct. Maybe we're just getting that early next year, a big Nintendo Direct with Metro Prime 4 as a part of it. That's kind of par for the course for big Nintendo games. They get featured in a Direct very prominently shortly before they're going to come out. But I definitely find it interesting that they didn't just say Direct. They said a bigger presentation and also shared doubt of Primes 2 and 3 being shown during this presentation. So yes, I am considering the possibility here that there is going to be a cross-generation version of Metroid Prime 4, and Nintendo is planning for Metroid Prime 4 to be taking up a significant segment of a presentation that may have something to do with Nintendo Switch 2. And that might make even more sense if we do see a little bit of Metroid Prime 4 at the Game Awards this year. Now, this Direct would be, I assume, sometime early next year. And I also think that would mean that Metroid Prime 4 is probably coming out sometime in the second half of the year. Perhaps it could somehow be squeezed into, say, the month of May or April. This is possible. But with the art book being slated for summer, and that's just about Metroid Primes 1 through 3, I feel like they'd want to space that out a little bit, and also have some sort of collector's item for Metroid Primes 4 a little bit later. And while an art book of some kind could definitely come up for Metroid Prime 4 well after its release, look at what they've done for Zelda, for example, I would think it odd to release Metroid Prime 4 before the art book for Metroid Primes 1 through 3. And so this has me leaning towards a second half release for Metroid Prime 4, but I'm not saying like Christmas time, I think it could be earlier, maybe late summer or early fall. And I think the jury is still out on when we see Metroid Primes 2 and 3, like if 2 is coming out in the first quarter of 2025, it's not guaranteed that 3 will be a part of that package, maybe 3 is just going to be saved for a little bit later. Maybe part 2 comes out in February and then Prime 3 comes out in May, and then in August or September we see Prime 4. Have them spaced out somewhat evenly, and slowly build up to Prime 4 as you market it throughout the year, alongside perhaps Switch 2, which will just bring in more excitement. Of course, there'll still be a Switch 1 version, and you'll be able to play it on either platform. There's certainly some room for interpretation here on what exactly is going on, but one thing is becoming pretty clear. Nintendo is certainly doing some things with Metroid right now, and that has me very excited. But what do you all think? Let me know in the comments below. This is Andres Restart. Thank you so much for listening and watching, and I'll see you all really soon. Take care. Bye.